Today we're going to start our cell cycle unit. So first we need to remember that one of the parts of the cell theory states that all cells come from pre-existing cells. So now we're going to study the process of how one cell becomes two cells. But first we need to start with a little introduction, some background information, and some vocabulary that we're going to use. So let's remind ourselves, why do cells need to divide? Why would we need to make more cells? I want you to think about it for a second and see what kind of reasons you can come up with. All right, hopefully you came up with some of these. Well, one, DNA cannot provide for really, really big cells. It just cannot provide enough instructions to make enough proteins and to orchestrate the entire cell. Part of that reason is because really big cells have a lot of volume, and so it's hard for those instructions to get everywhere that they need to get. And that leads us to the next one as well. Really big cells with a really big volume can't get stuff in and out fast enough. Remember, cells need to get in food and oxygen, and they need to get rid of waste and products and carbon dioxide. And really, really big cells can't do that fast enough. Okay, remember that we studied the fact that a cell's volume grows faster than the surface area. And everything has to get in, out, get in and out through the surface area, through that plasma membrane. Okay, we're getting to the point in the semester where a lot of things are starting to connect and you need to make sure that you remember all these little bits and pieces or go back and review some videos or come in during ILT and ask for some help. Another reason why cells would need to divide is so that an organism can grow. All living things, including you, started out as one single cell and then humans grow into about 120 trillion cells. So organism growth. And also to repair, if you cut yourself and you damage your skin, you need to repair that. You need to make more skin cells to replace the missing ones. Same thing if you tear a muscle or anything like that. You've got to repair and fix the damage. So some cell types divide all the time, such as cells in an embryo. Here's a seven-week-old human embryo. And that makes sense because you have to go from one single cell to a whole living baby in just nine months. So they are dividing very rapidly. Epithelial cells, so these are outer layer cells such as your skin. Uh, your skin cells, their job is to be this protecting outer layer. And they sort of slough off or fall off really often. In fact, most of the dust in your house is just your family's dead skin cells that fell off. So they're constantly being replaced. Also, inner lining cells, so the lining of your intestine. This is what your intestine looks like under a microscope. They are constantly falling off as well, and then they pass through your tract and you get rid of them. So they're constantly dividing and replacing so that they can continue to do their job correctly. You have other cell types in your body that almost never divide. They may divide rarely or they may never divide at all once you reach adulthood. These include your brain cells. That's why brain damage is so devastating is because once it happens, it's pretty much permanent because your brain cells cannot divide to replace them and make more brain cells. Also, uh, spinal cord cells. So these are another type of nerve cell uh, that are in your spinal column. That's why spinal injuries are so bad if you get into a car accident and sever your spinal cord and you're paralyzed from the neck down, it's likely you're going to be paralyzed for the rest of your life because your spinal cord cannot replicate and make more. And also heart muscle. Now, your heart cells rarely divide. So they just divide very, very slowly. Uh, that's why a really massive heart attack, you're going to suffer problems with that for the rest of your life, but it will get slightly better. Now, small heart attacks, the damage can usually be repaired after a few years, um, but it's very, very slow. And this is where that stem cell research that we talked about previously comes into play. Because since somebody cannot fix their own spinal cord, the idea that we could take a stem cell, tell it to become spinal cords, 
put it in somebody with a spinal cord injury, they may be able to repair that damage and they may actually be able to walk again. So that's why stem cell research is so important for these guys. So how do we control cell division? So we need cells to divide and make more cells, but we need to control it. We just don't need them dividing constantly and all willy-nilly. We need them to only divide when we need them to divide. So we have several ways to control that. So these are some vocabulary words that you need to be able to define. Um, so make sure you understand what these mean. One is contact inhibition. Contact means to touch. Inhibition means to stop. So contact inhibition is when cells touch each other and say, stop dividing. Okay, So they're communicating with one another. So cells come into contact with each other and they go, okay, we've taken up all the space that we have. Stop growing now. Okay? So this is communication. And we talked about how cells can communicate with one another. They have the cytoskeleton that pokes can poke out in through the cell membrane, and so they can touch another cell and communicate that way. We can also use hormones to communicate. There are also internal regulators. So internal meaning within, regulator to regulate, to control. So internal regulators are genes within an individual cell that communicate with that cell when it is safe for it to divide and when it is not safe for it to divide, okay? Some examples are the P53 gene. This gene is almost always mutated in cancer cells um, because P53 is a gene that says, stop, don't divide. There's also another gene called cyclin. Uh, this makes sure that the cell has done everything it needs to do to divide correctly. Okay, so internal regulators within an individual cell. Then we have external regulators, external meaning outside. So these are regulators that are outside of the cell that communicate with the body as a whole. Uh, so these are things such as growth factors like human growth hormone, and this can either stimulate or inhibit growth, meaning it can stimulate or inhibit cell division. These are really important uh, during the growth of individuals, uh, in, either in a fetus or in a young child, because they're orchestrating throughout the entire body when it's safe to grow, because everything needs to grow with each other. For example, if your, all your organs grow really big before your heart does, you're going to be in trouble, because your heart's not going to be big enough to pump blood to all of those giant organs. So we, may, we need to make sure that the heart is big enough before everything else grows. So it's sort of orchestrating the whole growth. Okay? Uh, really important in embryonic development. So what is cancer? We've talked about cancer. I've mentioned it already. Cancer is your cells gone rogue. Okay? Cancer, the, a tumor, is cells made out of your DNA but they've lost that control. Those regulators aren't working. Okay? Uh, and when they lose that control, they just divide and divide and divide and divide, and they grow on top of one another, and you can form a tumor. That's why it's so difficult to treat cancer, because anything that's going to kill a cancer cell, it's going to kill your healthy cells too, because cancer is your cells. They're your cells gone bad. Okay. There's lots of ways you can get cancer, or lots of things that can cause cancer. Uh, genetics, you could just be unlucky and be genetically prone to certain diseases. Uh, tobacco and other chemicals can be mutagens, so they can be carcinogenic. Uh, UV light laying out in the sun, we know we get skin cancer from being out in the sun too much. Uh, also, there are some viruses that can cause cancer. So now let's talk about some cell division vocabulary that we need to know. One is a somatic cell. So this is one of your word wall words. So somatic is just a fancy biology way of saying body. So soma is Greek for body. So a somatic cell is a body cell. A body cell is a cell whose genes will not be passed on for future generations. So body cells are not used to make babies. Body cells are just for you. So your skin, your muscles, your bones, 
uh, your blood cells, your hair cells, your liver cells, your stomach cells, all those are body cells. They're just for you. They're not for making babies. So if you get a mutation in a body cell, in a somatic cell, that mutation is special to you. You will not pass that mutation on to the next generation because you don't use somatic cells to make babies. Then you have a gamete. A gamete is a specialized cell that is used to make babies. So eggs and sperms. If you get a mutation in your gamete and then that gamete is used to make a baby, you have passed that mutation on. And now that mutation will be in every single cell in the new uh, embryo that's developing. So gamete mutations do get passed on if they're used to make a baby. Okay. Now, then we also have a sex cell, also known as a germ cell. So sex cell, germ cell, the same thing. These are cells that are destined to become a gamete. So they're not a gamete yet. They're not an egg yet, but when they specialize and mature, they will become either an egg if you're a girl or a sperm if you're a boy, okay? And so again, these genes, these, the DNA that is in a sex cell or germ cell will be passed on because it will become a gamete and then it can be passed on if it's used to make a baby. So now we have the chromosome number. We gotta come to how much DNA are in these cells. So you have diploid, that starts with that prefix di, di. So diploid, di means two. So a cell that is diploid has two sets of chromosomes, okay? Uh, these are all of your body cells, your somatic cells. So your hair, your skin, your liver. They have two sets of chromosomes because you got two sets of chromosomes. You got one set from your mom, and you got one set from your dad, okay? So your body cells, your somatic cells are diploid. So somatic and diploid go together. Then you can have haploid. Hap, that prefix means half. So haploid has one half of your chromosomes. It only has one set. These are your gametes, okay? Your gametes, your eggs and your sperms are haploid, okay? So gamete and haploid go together. And that's because when you get ready to make a baby, you don't give 100% of your DNA to the baby. Then it would just be a little clone of you. You only give half your DNA to the baby. Your partner gives the other half of DNA. Okay, half from mom, half from dad, so that your body cells are diploid. And then you only pass on half of your genes to your babies because they're gonna get half from the partner so that they'll be deployed. If you don't understand this, pause and call me over so I can help you out. This is important. So there are two types of cell division. We'll learn one today and practice with it a few more days, and then we'll learn the second type. The first type is called mitosis. Mitosis is your body cells, your somatic cells, such as your pancreas, your stomach, your liver, your heart. Meiosis is the creation of new sex cells, okay? Your gametes, your eggs and your sperm. And the way I remember this is mitosis happens in my toes, okay? Because my toes are made out of body cells, it's part of my body. Meiosis happens in my O area because it's made to make baby making cells, okay? So mitosis and meiosis. Okay, make sure you remember the two difference. So mitosis goes with body cells and diploid. Meiosis go with gametes and haploid, okay? All right, so there's your introduction to the cell cycle. Now let's actually get into the cell cycle step by step. 